Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year! Well, it's, okay, at least at the time that I'm uploading this, it's New Year's Eve. So, you might be watching this in 2020, or you might be watching this in 2021. Regardless, Happy New Year, because 2021 is finally upon us. My goodness, I wanted to take a moment to do a slightly different video than what we normally do. On our channel, we do a lot of summoning sessions, that's not a surprise. However, I wanted to reflect on some of the banners that we got to summon on this year. And so I thought it would be fun to rank and list my four favorite banners from 2020. We've got a lot of choices, lots of mythic banners, legendary banners, uh, bound hero battle banners, double special heroes banners. Oh my god, so many to choose from, honestly, but I actually have a pretty strong, clear idea of what my four favorite banners are, and so I wanted to go ahead and share that with you. Now, before we get started, let me just go ahead and say that these are my favorite banners based on my personal experience. They are not objectively better than anybody else's, it's just that I maybe like the characters more, or maybe just had really good luck summoning on them. I'll talk more about them individually, but again, it's just my opinion, as is anything on my channel. All right, starting from the bottom and working our way up, let's start with banner number four, the Dark Burdens banner. Oh boy, okay. So I had a lot of mixed feelings when this banner first dropped. Um, there's always a lot of hype around the Fallen Heroes banner because of course, it's different. It has the energy of a seasonal banner because of course a lot of these characters are, you know, a varied version of their regular selves, but they're treated like new heroes because of course these heroes are available in the regular summoning pool. And I was really impressed with the choice of units that they went with. I guess we should probably start with Ike, um, who's probably the reason why I had such mixed feelings about this banner. For anybody who's never played any of the Tellius games, at no point in the story does Ike ever fall, if that makes sense, if you get what I'm saying. Like, he's he never has a moment in which he touches the medallion and becomes this fallen alt. Like, it's entirely ba it's fictional, it's not canon. It's entirely based off this, um, this art from one of the cipher cards that Ike has, um, which I guess left the community wondering like what is canon and what isn't and what constitutes a fallen unit and blah 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 blah. So I was kind of like really skeptical when I first saw Fallen Ike because I was like this isn't this doesn't actually happen in game. Why is he getting a fallen alt? They just wanted to give Ike an alt. And so I was kind of like actually pissed off when this banner first dropped. But then I got over it because I was like, you know what? He still looks really really cool and this does open the door for some other units to get fallen alts later down the road. So like no point in getting mad about it. So eventually I got over it, and Ike is one of my favorite- no, Ike is literally my favorite lord in the Fire Emblem series. So I eventually got over it, and I was really tempted to summon. And he's obviously a crazy good unit, so like, it was easy for me to get swayed over once once I finally got over that hurdle. Who else was on here? Ah, uh, Fallen Male Corrin. Oh my god. I was actually so tempted to summon on this banner because of Fallen Male Corrin. I thought that they just did such a fantastic job with his artwork, and oh my god, Cam did such a beautiful job with the voice lines. Ugh. I'm not normally like moved by the Fallen units, but like, I looked at Fallen Corrin and I read his voice, or I listened to his voice lines, and then I saw the Forging Bonds conversations, and I was like, oh, I want to take care of him. I want to help him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was so tempted by this banner because of Fallen Male Corn and Ike, of course, but both Fallen Male Corn was really the one that, like, sort of tugged at my heartstrings a bit. Um, ironically, I didn't end up summoning on this banner. I think I was saving my orbs for something else. I can't remember what, but I did not summon on this banner. And I don't regret it, but it would have been nice if I summoned. But that's okay. I will get another chance literally this month, January, because they are getting a Forging Bonds rerun. So I will get my chance to spark a unit. Don't know who yet, but I will summon. Fallen Julia is also fantastic. I don't know anything about Julia because I haven't played the games that she's from. So I didn't even know that she was a candidate for a Fallen unit, but she's got a Takara solo and she's a really beastly unit. So she gets a pass from me. <laughs> and then who else was on there? Fallen Leon. That was 
really nice, actually. I really like that they added him. I think a lot of us were expecting, how do you pronounce his name, Formotis? The enemy, the main antagonist from Sacred Stones. I think a lot of us were expecting him to get in at some point. We just didn't quite know exactly how or in what form. And so for him to take the shape of, of course, Fallen Leon made a lot of sense. And it was really cool, especially for those fans that like really like Leon. So I really liked him. And then we got Ashnard as our Grand Hero Battle Unit, which is kind of funny to me. Like, I get why he's in here. If they're going to add Ashnard in at any point, it this is a good opportunity to get him in. I will just say that I won't ever call him Fallen Ashnard because, quite honestly, if you've played Path of Radiance, you know that he's kind of crazy to begin with. It doesn't really escalate any further from there. He's kind of crazy from point A to point B. He does get a little bit crazier towards the end, but like, he's, he's kind of always been that way. So, for me, he's not Fallen. He's just that. He's just like that, so... It was cool, and he's a good unit, and it was also super refreshing to see a male flyer not get shafted. So, that was nice. That was a nice cherry on top. So, all in all, I really like this banner. Like I said, didn't summon on it. Kind of wish I did, but I don't regret it because I was saving my orbs, and I gotta be diligent about that, diligent about that sometimes. So, good banner. Really liked it. That's why it's number four on our list. Moving on. Banner number three. Okay, Despair and Hope. Oh my gosh. Speaking of Tellius, right? <sighs> I know that a lot of people complain about Tellius, and I understand it. I completely understand it. We've been getting so many Tellius units this entire year. In almost, almost every seasonal banner, we've had at least one Tellius unit just snuck in there for no reason. And Tellius has gotten a lot of hate because of it, and I get it. Tellius has become the Fates of 2020. Like, it, at one point when Fates was getting unit after unit, alt after alt, now it's Tellius units that are getting alt after alt in every banner. And I get it, like, I totally understand the player base's frustration. However, I also really, really, really liked Path of Radiance. It is such a good game and I do think that the story itself holds up really really well today. I do think that at least of the Fire Emblem games that I've played, it is one of the strongest and I genuinely believe that the Telia series deserves all the hype it gets. And so when I saw this banner, oh, I was so happy. Not just for myself, but like for the entire player base. Because, okay, let's start with Jill. Jill is such a great character. One of my favorites from the from um, Path of Radiance. She has such tremendous growth as a character, starting with the Day in Army, and of course, you know, being recruited into Ike's mercenary group, and then obviously being an outsider and learning to get over her racist tendency towards the Lagoos. It she has growth. This girl has growth, and. It shocked me when I downloaded Faye, when I first started playing Faye last year, and I messaged one of my friends and I was like, where, is Jill not in this game? And he told me no, and I was like, whoa, this is really surprising because she's, I know that she's a very popular character, I'm surprised that they haven't added her in yet. And of course, last November, November of 2019, everybody was expecting us to be getting a far-fetched Heroes banner, and... Jill was like, Jill and Shinon were two units that everybody was expecting and hoping that we would finally get that month, and we didn't. And so, fast forward almost a year later, and we finally have her in the game, and I'm just like so ecstatic. Ironically, I did not end up summoning for Jill, uh, but I still love her. She's a great unit, and I'm just really happy for the player base that was waiting for her. But who else is on here? Shinon! Oh my god, like, actual king of racism. <laughs> it honestly blows my mind that people love Shinon. Like, I guess people just like to hate him. He is pretty good at being hateful, I'm not gonna lie. He's very hateful in Path of Radiance. But, anyway, he's a crazy good unit, loaded with fodder. I've been blessed enough to have been pity broken by him. So, I have great fodder thanks to him. Not mad at all. Um... He's great. I'm glad that he's in the game, because I know that a lot of people, re people really, really wanted him. Don't know why, but <laughs> he's there. And of course, you can't have Shinon in the game, Shin sorry, Shinon in the game, without having Gatri in the game, because they go together. They are a pair. And though I had mixed feelings about Gatri's art when it first came out, it also grew on me. 
And unlike Fallen Ike, I actually did end up summoning for Gatry. I ended up sparking for him. And he is such a good unit. And I love his kit. I like his lance. I like his the skills that he comes with. I like how they synergize. He's a unit that I would definitely want to plus 10 at some point. Not right now because I have so many other plus 10 projects that I'm trying to work on. But I really liked what they did with Gatry and I'm very pleased. Um, who's left? Ileana. Oh my gosh. Ileana, what a pleasant surprise for a demote. I, it, it's so funny because I, I used Ileana in my most recent playthrough of Path of Radiance and I always liked her. I always liked her more than Soren, that's for sure. And I just didn't know that she was popular. I didn't expect a lot of people to like her. And so she got her Halloween alt last year and that seemed to have been really well received. And so I was just so shocked that when she came in, you know, as a demote on this banner, I was like, whoa, she's cute, she's got a great stat spread, she's got a great inheritable tome, and she's a four-star unit. Oh my god. Like, they were being... I genuinely thought that they could have made her a five-star unit, and people still would have, you know, chucked their orbs in for her. Like, wow. They gave us a great demote in that banner. And overall, this banner was such... For me, it was such a win. And who, wait, um, I'm missing somebody. The Grand Hero Battle, Petra. Petra's interesting. She's such a very dyn... I think she's a very... I think she's more dynamic than some of the other antagonists in Path of Radiance just because of her background, which I won't spoil for anybody who hasn't played, but she's more interesting. She has something in common with Soren that I think sets her apart from the others. Um, and she's got a great lance that does actually play to her character, which I always love. I love it when a unit's weapon actually reflects their personality or their characteristics. That's great. I love that attention to, de to detail. And I like Petra. I thought she's she's a cool, badass woman. She's a great antagonist. Um, I was happy to see her as a Grand Hero Battle unit. So that those five units completed that banner for me. I loved it. I was happy. I summoned. And I honestly am looking forward to the next Tellius banner. The only thing, I guess, if I had to complain about one thing, is that Boyd wasn't on this banner. But this just means that the next time we get a Path of Radiance banner, not Radiant Dawn, Path of Radiance banner, I feel like Boyd is pretty much guaranteed to be on there. And I will definitely be summoning for him. All right, with that being said, let's move on to banner number two. Overseas Memories. All right. I feel like this banner was probably a favorite for a lot of players. Um, let's, let's just be honest here. Three Houses is the newest entry in the Fire Emblem series. It's gonna have a lot of popularity. People are gonna want to see units from this game. And so as soon as we got this banner, as soon as the video dropped and we saw it and I saw Ingrid on the thumbnail, I freaked out. I don't think many of us were expecting a Three Houses banner knowing that we were going to be getting Three Houses units on the upcoming Brave Heroes banner literally a month later. We got more Three Houses units, we got new Three Houses units that we haven't already seen in the game, and on top of that, we got them in the form of summer alts, which are so incredibly fan servicey to begin with. Oh my god, it was just such a perfect storm. <laughs> and so, oh my gosh, I mean, we already mentioned Ingrid. Like, she, uh, I started off with the blue lines. They, I, I feel like whichever house you start off with in three houses, you're automatically going to be biased with them. They are, you're always going to have a soft spot for them. They were your first house, you were automatically going to be drawn to them. I'm sure there are some exceptions to this, but almost every time I ask somebody what their preferred house is, that's usually their first house. And so I started with the Blue Lions. I have a soft spot for all of them. Ingrid wasn't my favorite Blue Lion, but am I happy to see her? Absolutely. I'm so glad that she's in the game and her artwork looks so good. And she's got a great kit for her. I'll talk about the weapons in just a sec. She's got a great kit, and I'm really happy that she's in the game now in some form. Of course, I'm so glad the Blue Lions are getting a little bit more representation little by little because we got Sylvain. Oh my gosh. I, I'm i like getting warm right now. Oh my gosh. Just like thinking about this, like seeing his artwork, hearing Joe's voice line as I see Sylvain pop up on the screen. I'm like, oh god. <sighs> My orbs are in danger. <laughs> it was just so visceral. I was like, oh no, <laughs> they got me. <laughs> 
I was so ecstatic to find out that Sylvain was a demote on that banner. Oh my god. And I always have mixed feelings about getting one of my favorite units as a demote because on one hand, you know, they're easier to plus 10, but on the other hand, they don't come with like a really nice preferred weapon, and so it's a give and take, and sometimes they might get screwed over. I don't like Sylvain's weapon, I'm still trying to work on my build for Sylvain, I still haven't quite solidified something, but I really like his artwork, I really like the voice work that Joe did for him, and I, I mean my Sylvain is at plus 9, I'm literally just one merge away from finishing him. I... All of the units on this banner certainly do a great job of solidifying the package, but he, he does a lot of the lifting. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> let me keep going, let me not get carried away. Who's next? Um, Summer Dorothea. I haven't completed my Black Eagles run, so I don't know a lot about Dorothea, but it was still really exciting to see her because I know that Dorothea is super popular. I know that she's a fan favorite amongst many players, and she looks gorgeous. Her artwork looks so fantastic. I really like what they did with her. They kept her as a dancer. Well, they... She should have been a singer, technically. They should have given her sing instead of dance, but whatever, that's beside the point. She is a refresher unit. She's got really good stat spread, and she's good. All of the units on this banner were good. They were all fantastic. And of course, I mean, we have to talk about... Oh my gosh, Rhea and Byleth. Like, talk about fan service. Jesus. Oh my god, hiring Kaboon, Kaboon to do that artwork. Oh my gosh. Byleth is nuts. Like, as a unit, she's insane. She's got pretty decent fodder, she's a dual unit, so of course she's gonna be crazy good. Like, it was really hard to find anything wrong with this banner. Me, personally, I think. I'm sure other people will have flaws, and I had a really good time summoning on it. The Sylvain merges came really quickly. I didn't get a Dorothea like I had wanted, but... The Sylvain merges came pretty quickly, so I was really excited by how that summoning session went. Um, <laughs> I forgot to mention Lawrence. Lawrence in a speedo. He's a joke that writes himself. Honestly, not much to say about him. Um, I'm glad Lawrence is in the game, somehow. Don't know that he's popular enough for us to really ever get regular Lawrence in the game, so I'm kind of glad they snuck him in somehow. Even though I don't think any of us ever asked to see him in a speedo still a great banner that's it for number two though let's move on to my last and final banner that we're going to talk about today my number one oh it's time to simp oh my gosh <sighs> the goddess's servants banner oh boy yes i do feel a little bit bad about including two back-to-back -back three houses banner again it's the most relevant game right now there's a lot of units from this game that are highly anticipated by a lot of fans, and to take the number one spot on this list, it's largely because of the characters that they chose to include on this banner. A lot of them I really, really, really love. Um, I am predictable. Let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. I absolutely really like what they did with Sedith. He looks fantastic. Um, I was very nervous about him being a demote uh, when I was first watching the banner. I was very scared uh, because I was afraid that he was going to get shafted. Male flyers always get shafted. They have been getting shafted so many times this year. And so as soon as I saw his base kit, I was like, oh no, this could be so bad. This could be so terrible. I need to see what his stats are. And luckily, thank God. Oh my God. He's got a great stat spread. A fan fantastic preferred weapon, and though my summoning session for him was very rough, I eventually got my final merges and he is my plus 10 summoner supported unit on my, on my alternate account. I love my Sedith, I am so glad that he's in the game, he is a unit that I genuinely really really like from Three Houses, and so I knew that at some point we were going to be getting a, you know, a Knights of Saros banner. I just didn't expect for it to come so soon. Again, reminder that this banner dropped literally like a month or two after the Brave Heroes banner. So none of us were expecting even more Three Houses units so quickly after, you know, Claude, Edelgard, Dimitri, Lysithia. So when this banner dropped and when I saw Flane on the thumbnail, Oh my gosh. Because Flane is another unit that I love. I'm so glad that, of course, they introduced Flane and Sedith 
on the same banner. I, I can't imagine them doing otherwise, but I also adore Flane. I think that she is adorable. I really like her. I appreciate how silly she is. I appreciate her fascination for fish. I also appreciate her maturity, and I appreciate the relationships that she develops with a lot of the cast members in Three Houses. And of course, she's also a crazy good unit. I mean, a preferred staff with 30% damage reduction. Like, she pretty much has kind of stolen the spot for the best healer in the game, maybe? I, I hesitate to say that, but like, 30% damage reduction within a two-tile radius, that is so hard to beat. And she's a flyer. Oh my gosh, you can slap so many supportive skills on her. Joint drive skills, rain skills, ground orders, air orders. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much potential for her. Oh my god, I'm so glad that they introduced her. And, of course, we have to talk about Shamir and Catherine. I really love Shamir. I like Catherine. I don't like her nearly as much as Shamir, but I don't hate her. And so, of course, when we saw, you know, Flynn and Sedith, and then I saw Sh Shamir and Catherine, I was like, oh my god, this makes so much sense. I liked all of the units on this banner. Shamir is such a badass character. She's so cool. And Allegra does such a fantastic job voicing her. Um, like, the fact that I liked all four characters on this banner is what ultimately sold me on this. And then getting Nemesis as our Grand Hero Battle Unit was honestly quite... It was the cherry on top. They didn't have to do that, but... Well... Let's talk about Nemesis, actually. Let me not get carried away here. Because... When I saw that Nemesis was our Grand Hero Battle Unit, I also once again had mixed feelings. It was really the only part of the banner that I ultimately still have mixed feelings about, that we had Nemesis as a Grand Hero Battle Unit, because in my experience with Three Houses, I always imagined that Nemesis was going to be a, a mythic unit. I always imagined that he would be a mythic unit. He is quite literally an ancient hero that's i'm gonna use the word hero very carefully very lightly take that with a grain of salt he is literally an ancient legendary hero from the past with god-like strength because of spoilers he pretty much matches the description of what a mythic unit should be more so than what any of these fairies are in my opinion i think he's more mythic than a lot of our our mythic units, but that's beside the point. I was so convinced that when we got Nemesis in the game, he would be a mythic unit, and so I was both excited and also disappointed that he was the Grand Hero Battle Unit, because yes, I understand why he's the Grand Hero Battle Unit, but also this is such a mixed, sorry, this is such a missed opportunity uh, to feature him in the mythic pool, because first of all, his artwork looks fantastic. Um, but that sort of, the, the dark sort of the creator that they made, oh my god, it's just so underwhelming. I don't hate it. I'm on the boat of people that don't hate the weapon. I actually like it. But if they had decided to make him a mythic unit, oh my god, the potential. He could have been so much more. And so, even though I already have a plus 10 <laughs> nemesis, I am, I do still have some reservations about how he was introduced into Fire Emblem Heroes, especially since I don't expect him to ever get an alt. I really don't. I'd be very shocked if he did. But still, that's really my only gripe with this banner. Like I said, I really adore a lot of the units on this banner, and it's ultimately for that reason that I had to put it as number one on our list. And that's it. Those are my top four favorite banners from 2020. There were a lot to choose from, but like I said, these just kind of came to mind pretty quickly. I knew which banners I really liked, I knew which characters I really liked, as it's really ultimately the characters that draw me towards a banner, more than fodder. So, yeah, that's my list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Everybody, thank you so much for watching, and as a friendly reminder, I do stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Feel free to drop on by if you'd ever like some good company or good entertainment. We have a good time there. Thanks so much, everybody, and Happy New Year's. Happy saving, happy summoning, and take care. Goodbye. What does green have again? Green has Edelgard, which I would like. And then Celica, so Sparrow 3, and then who is the third unit? Jill. Thank you. Right. Okay, let's do it. Oh! <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs>